happening? Pokemon has just released its Gen 9 starter designs, and I absolutely love them. They all have some aspect to them that says, pick me, pick me, and even the most boring designs is so expressive. I love it so much. Unlike previous generations, seriously Game Freak, what was that Hey Arnold shape language? Like, I love them, but they could be better. And it got me thinking about making my own region. You see, in my own time, I've been working on one since about the start of quarantine, but I've not drawn it since March of 2021, and that was all on paper and never digital. So for lack of a better phrase, I have forgot how to draw Pokemon. And so I sat down and thought of what makes a Pokemon a Pokemon. Like, of course, it's some magical creature, but what makes something from Monster Hunter or D&D different than a Pokemon. And I think I narrowed it down to four key factors. Of course, there are many other things like being licensed by Pokemon makes you a Pokemon. Even that technically could be up for debate if you think about Ultra Beast. Are they Pokemon? Are they legendaries? Are they are, are, are they even real? Like they feel like some kind of fever dream that I never woke up from. And that's why I'd like to explore this two part series. See what makes a Pokemon a Pokemon. I think I found the four key factors of what makes a Pokemon. Now, in this, we'll only be exploring two of those real heavily, and I think there might even be a fifth one, but that can't happen until a little later, so I'll keep that to myself for now. But instead of hopping straight into my fake Pokemon region, I thought, why not do a warm up challenge to get myself back into drawing Pokemon, as it's been a long time since I've drawn anything remotely resembling the Pokemon art style. And even when I did, it did not look very good. Like, dear God, what did I think? Like how that, oh, that fucking line work though. Just gross. Young me should feel ashamed. <laughs> I, I'm just kidding. Not really. And so thinking of ideas, my friend, cool kid, uh, you may know him. He has just, just a, a small channel, like only seven or so subscribers. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's a big number compared to what I got. He introduced me to this game, Warframe, and a lot like Pokemon when you first start this game, you get to choose from three starter Warframes, each with their own unique mechanics and abilities. And I'm in love. I've only played the game for about less than a month, and I already have like 48 hours in it. It's so fucking fun if you haven't played it yet. I highly recommend it, and it's completely free. But this video is more focusing on the Pokemon aspect of this challenge. So in this, I'll be designing three new starter Pokemon using two of these major concepts. We'll get into the other two later. But for now, I'd like to focus on theme and convention. Theme, of course, is what is this based on? What is what is it based around? What is the theme of the Pokemon? The Gen 4 starters are themed around mythology. Asform is themed around the weather and water molecules. And Wobbuffet is literally just a punching bag. Now, the themes are, of course, are an easy topic to tackle because these are just going to be starters themed off of the Warframes. But the Warframe starters, uh, currently being Excalibur, Volt, and Mag, all have abilities that aren't themed around the Pokemon starter types. Excalibur is known for using a sword and has one fucking ranged attack in his abilities. Vol is known for having high synergy moves and a lot of electrical attacks, and also looking like a squid. <laughs> and Mag uses her magnetic powers to literally crush the bones of her enemies. How do you turn these into Pokemon? While one of the other themes stylization does incorporate into this, I feel design conventions also apply to this. Design convention is something that affects any piece of media you see, and in Pokemon, it heavily affects the designs of the Pokemon, obviously being called design convention, like there's, there's a reason. <laughs> I'm too tired to record this. Things like the shape language, the line quality, the fact that it's all very neat and tidy, especially compared to the older Gen 1 designs. These are often what is seen to make a Pokemon. And the thing with convention is, there's always a time to follow it, and there's always a time to break it. And many Pokemon have their own individual design convention. Things that either hint at or will be elaborated on further in future evolutions, or just further the lore of the Pokemon. Sableye, despite not being a rock type, is known to eat rocks and has literal gems in its eyes. And while this is a Pokemon that technically doesn't evolve if you don't include Mega Evolution, it does elaborate on the lore of the Pokemon and how you'd imagine it living on its own in a cave, eating rocks to sustain itself. Or look at Burmy, having three distinct forms that all represent some form of type, uh, kind of, the, the, ba the trash bag form doesn't look like steel type, I'm just saying, despite that's what it's supposed to resemble with the wires down there. And while it doesn't affect Burmy itself, these conventions will be elaborated on its evolution later down the line. And that's how I think we can mix the Warframe's design conventions, being 
swords, electricity, and magnets to simplify, with the starter Pokemon conventions just being grass, water, and fire. Anyways, enough preamble of me trying to get this video to make some sort of sense. I'm recording this at 3 a.m. with no script, and I currently have 16 minutes recorded and try to get this down to 4 minutes, so uh, yeah, hopefully I figure something out. So I decided to base the grass type off of Excalibur, and Excalibur, unlike the other Warframes, is really good for early game. It is very beginner friendly, especially because many new players are drawn to the melee mechanic of the game, and Excalibur takes this to its logical extreme, having all his abilities based on swords. And so I thought, what would... Excalibur also has, like, a very boring visual design, at least from the front, and the only thing that really draws out to me is the horn, and when I think of an animal with a horn, I think of rhinoceros or rhinoceros beetles. So I decided to base this off the rhinoceros beetle, hence the actual bug typing you'll see later. Now, to help convey its grass typing, because it is the grass starter, and that should be the focal point, I decided to make it covered in leaves, only its horn appearing, and give me the little stick made me think of a little Hollow Knight character. So I decided to give it a little Hollow Knight-like mask that like hides its face and obscures its eyes, adding a lot more mystery to this already mysterious character. It also plays into the fact that this Pokemon takes the role of the defensive one, at least early in the game. A reference to Excalibur's relatively high armor classing compared to the other starter Warframes. Now his design went through a heavy, heavy change process, and it had a lot of that it gets ugly before it gets good phase. And I'm really glad I stuck with it, because the design I have now with the head being a different shade than the body, and also those like three leaf tufts on the chest help break up the shape. I feel it worked really, really well for what I was going for, in that it's just complex enough that it draws your attention, but not too much that any real factor distracts you from any other factor. I didn't really have much to say on this besides it was the longest drawing. This one was over two and a half hours not including the shading, which I didn't record. And it's probably the one I'm most proud of in this video, hence why it's in the thumbnail. Wish, the shrub Pokemon, often seen training together in forests. They swing their sticks around like a sword or a club in order to hone their skills. Older Bwish will often teach younger members of the group ways to use their clubs more gracefully, often mistaken for dancing. Though small and timid in nature, which are known to overcome their impishness in order to protect others. When noticing a Pokemon that cannot defend themselves, they will often draw the aggressor's attention, attempting to take them down. Although, even in groups, they rarely succeed in actually taking down their opponents, only distracting them long enough for the victim to escape. It is a grass bug type, with the abilities Overgrow and Hidden Ability Fur Coat. I was gonna give it Fluffy, but uh, a 6 times weakness to <laughs> Fire may not be good for a starter Pokemon. I was already pushing it with the adding the bug typing. Now, while I feel this Pokemon may be a little on the weaker side. After all, it's mostly defense-based for an ironically more attack-based Warframe. I feel it definitely adds more to what it feels like to play Excalibur early versus what it plays to play the other Warframes early, where you're a lot more squishy. And while I don't think the design's perfect, it has its own issues, along with all the others and even this recording as it's recorded at 3am with no script, I still love it and it's probably my favorite of the design so far, and I can't wait to see where the community helps me take it. This one you can see the concept art for a little bit, which I will flash up on screen. And, well, I kept it the initial concept because I loved it so much. I changed the initial shape because I realized it kind of looked like a, uh, it looks like a butt plug. And so I messed around with the shape a lot to try to break up that head shape because I know squids have that like torpedo shape, but that doesn't work what I was going with. I also tried to give it a skirt because that's something you can see on the design of the initial Warframe. Eventually, I got rid of the skirt and just had to have little short stubby legs. What did they feel? Definitely made it feel more starter-like, especially because the head is the body in this case, and starters are known for having relatively large heads to make them cuter and more infant-like. And of course, I made it a squid because, <laughs> well, there's a reason he's called Squid Frame. By who? Like me and one other person, but he's Squid Frame. The Squid Game Squid Frame. Despite changing the lease from its initial concept, I still feel that this is a major upgrade. Not only does it feel actually like a starter Pokemon, it feels like a Pokemon. I also added a yellow tint to the top of its head to kind of hint at the future electric typing that this is obviously going to go into. I do have typings planned for all these, even if I don't have designs planned for all their evolutions. I also realized after the shading process that I basically made a Minecraft Glow Squid, but a Pokemon, and you know, I don't really mind that. After all, a Glow Squid works way better in the Pokemon universe than it does in Minecraft. Cephal, the glowing Pokemon. Often called the firework of the sea, the fin on top of its head glows with its mood, often changing color. The more intense the glow, the more intense the emotion. As each Cephal believes it shines the brightest, they tend not to do well around each other, and prefer deeper waters where they can glow more brightly. When not in competition with each other, they will often form groups to perform deep sea light shows, all working in perfect harmony, gathering audiences so large that fishermen will often wait for these quote-unquote underwater firework displays 
to get a bigger catch. It is a water type with the abilities Torrent and the hidden ability Adaptability. I was gonna give it Illuminate because it glows, but that's... I wanted these abilities to be semi-competitive like most starter hidden abilities. And you know, it's already a very fast special attacker, and I feel that very reflects the Warframe it's based on. As whenever I'm playing Volt, I feel like I rely way more on my abilities to control groups rather than just shooting or using a sword. This one I'm rather unsure on in a lot of aspects. Not as much the design, I feel it's just simple enough that has enough personality that people won't hate it, but at the same time I feel there are things that can be fixed, along with just its. Along with its lore feels just a little too incomplete. But I would love to give your feedback as you have not been staring at this for the past 9 hours unlike I have, and I'd love to get a new perspective. The last and one of my least favorite of the designs, mostly because how much I struggled and just had to compromise to get this done. A lot of my friends really love this design, it's actually their favorite so far. But to go back to the theme of convention, I did want to base this on the Chinese Zodiac that all fire starters are based on, at least loosely. And so I decided to give Mag a snake, partially because, well, I like snakes, and also because one of her major uh, design elements are the coils around her arms that are supposed to be like, I think Tesla coils? I don't know. Editor me, explain what they are. But it has something to do with magnets and I want that to really apply to her design in the future, so having a snake-like body and being able to bend into different spirally shapes, I feel that'd work perfectly fine with that. I also gave it a gem on the top of its head to reference her like big Among Us looking ass helmet that eventually will become bigger and play more into the rock elements of the design, as I want the starters to be grass steel, water electric, and fire rock respectively in their final evolutions. I also messed around with a bit with the pattern because it felt just empty, and I think that might have also been my, at the time, being unhappy with the design. I'm a lot more happy with it now that I have hindsight, but while working on it, there was just so much I was messing with. One thing I am proud of, though, is that weird rattle shape I added. I like to imagine it's, like, disconnected pieces of, like, rock or fragmented, like, what are rattles made of? Scales? Are they scales? Either way, I like to imagine they're loosely connected, and when this Pokemon gets upset, smoke erupts from its tail, causing them to rattle. I don't know, it's a dumb little thought I had while drawing that I had to share because I forgot that at the Pokedex entry. But in hindsight, I really like this design, and despite being probably the simplest, I guess that was what I was going for. After all, keep it simple, stupid. I also did end up changing the shape of the rattle. Originally, it was going to be this weird, like, uh, magnet shape representing this weird magnet shape that's supposed to kind of look like Mag's claws that she has. I think those are claws. And then a stone would rattle between it to hint at the, like, magnetic theming. But I think the gem on its head and the Pokedex entry will kind of hint towards it in the future. After all, these are just the themes that will be going forward with the Pokemon, and most themes are only hinted at in the first evolution with starters and not actually incorporated completely to the design. Exodal, the smoke Pokemon. Despite being fire type, they are not known to handle the heat well. They form dens under clusters of rocks and wait for the desert sun to set, where they can spend the rest of the night playing in the desert sand. On rare occasions, they are out during the daytime, normally because of food or outgrowing their den. They will bury themselves in the sand, with only their gem visible. They will then gradually heat up the sand around them, causing any potential predators to be deterred from the hiding spot. Lost travelers in the desert will often try to locate Barry Exodal, as offering them even a little food can often persuade them to lead you to water. Now this Pokemon, I'm really unsure about the stats. I am known to very much be a min-maxer when I make my fake Pokemon, and that's a problem I kind of see in these designs, but looking at other starter stats, they seem to be kind of on par with that theming of having one or two very high stats, maybe three, but very much lowering the others in that cost. This one, despite not being very happy with the design myself, I know others don't agree with that opinion, but I'm also the artist who made these. I definitely feel like this one leans most into its theming of Mag. After all, I hinted at it being related to the rock type by having it hide under rocks, and I wanted an idea of like having magnetic fillings attached to its gem as it comes out of its den. But that seemed a little too complicated, not related to its fire typing very much, as much as I related the others to their typings. I also create an unintentional theme of being reclused in their own way, whether it be just being deep underwater or very timid, being known to help others in one way or another, whether intentionally or unintentionally. And I feel that very much helps with the personality of these Pokemon, and I can't wait to explore this further. And I won't lie, I don't have much to say about this Pokemon just yet because it is the one I don't like the most, but I would love to get your feedback on how I can either improve this design or on its future evolutions. We may have also noticed I haven't actually hinted at what the evolutions will be because I have no idea. You see, I wanted to make this video first so I can get community feedback, whether it be from the Pokemon community for more Pokemon themed aspects or the Warframe community for more Warframe themed aspects. My friend Cool Kid, who I think I mentioned once or twice, I don't remember this whole script's improv, actually gave me a really cool idea for the Excalibur starter with maybe giving the female of the final evolution 
things that kind of look more like the Warframe Nyx. Because originally Nyx, I think that's how you pronounce it, or is it Nyx? I'm gonna say Nyx. Because Nyx was originally supposed to be a female version of Excalibur. And you can kind of see that in her design. In fact, that's part of the reason the shiny is blue. I don't think I explained the shinies at all in that explanation. I probably should have. I might, I might edit it back in post. But I'd also love to get more ideas. Of course, there's gonna be things like the Excalibur's one stick's gonna become a sword, the squid will become more electric, and the snake will have a bigger dome on its head. Those are themes I know are gonna stick around, and the typings are more than likely not gonna change from what I said the final evolutions will be, but who knows? That's part of the fun of this. The challenge was not only gonna be a learning experience, but just to have fun. Maybe you learned something from this video that you'll take further in your exploration of making your own Pokemon. Because Lord knows I learned nothing from this. I am just as dumb as I started and I am just faking it till I make it. Hey, thank you for watching the video. I really appreciate it and sorry for how scuffed it was. But if you like sneak peeks of any of this stuff, I often post it in my announcements chat and my Discord. The link will be in the first description below. I also have a Twitch, twitch.tv slash ringaroundme. Um, due to my current living situations, I can't stream as often, but I try to at least stream once a week. And as of late, I'm going to start putting announcements on when I'm going to stream that week. That way everyone can be prepared. This was a lot of fun and I really hope you enjoyed. If I'm forgetting anything else, I'll flash it up on screen in my outro card, but just know that I appreciate your existence. Please keep on existing and I hope you have a good existence. Bye. Goodbye, hug.